Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Catherine of Siena Parish here at Price's Corner in Wilmington, Delaware. We're beginning the holiest week in the year. Today we'll enter with Jesus into his holy city, and we'll hail him as son of David, Israel's king, and soon to be king of all creation. We'll do things a little differently today. I'm going to read the first two readings from the Mass for Palm Sunday. And then in a mini homily, I will suggest how you might view the passion and death of Jesus in its pain and its triumph. I want everyone to experience as our own Jesus' passage from death to life. So after this brief homily, I'm going to ask you to read slowly and reflectively chapters 14 and 15 of Mark's Gospel, the Passion itself. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our first reading for Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday, is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue so that I might speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Our responsory Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Our second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Your attitude must be Christ. Though he was in the form of God, he did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself taking on the form of a slave and being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name. So that at Jesus' name, every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. The word of the Lord. The words we just heard from Isaiah describe Jesus' attitude. I will speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning I listen to God, and I have not rebelled. I have not turned back and he will risk himself. I gave my back to those who beat me. My face I did not shield. This nameless servant of God seems to speak with the spirit of Jesus to you and to me. He's urging us to have Jesus' attitude, ready to share his good news with others, the many people who are weary and burdened. And right now the good news is that he loved you and me so completely that he went to the extreme. He was stricken for our sins, bruised for our offenses. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he will bear. 
This passionate love is at a level of intensity that should make any of us uncomfortable. And yet now Holy Week is the time, above all, when God gives the grace to desire to go beyond our fears, our desires for ease, our self-protective attitudes, the little lies we tell ourselves. His love reached its ultimate when, as Paul says, though being God, he did not cling to his divine status. He did not disdain emptying himself of godlike power and protection and becoming human, even to the ultimate degradation as a slave and a criminal sentenced to death on a cross. Greater love you have never experienced. You do this through faith. So how to spend this week? Well, remember the liturgies of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Come, if at all possible. Either way, maintain an attitude of recollection and prayer. Remember what Jesus said to his three disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Watch and pray with me. My soul is sorrowful, even unto death. And so right now, I ask you to take out your Bible when I'm finished speaking and read Mark 14 and 15, The Passion. Pray with it. Spread it out through the week. Ask Jesus that his attitude would become yours. Go with him where you ordinarily would not go. If you do, when Easter dawns, you will understand resurrection. Before you go to read the Passion, we'll pray together and uh, also have the announcements. I'll make these announcements first, lest we forget them. Please check the Holy Week schedule on the front doors of the church and on our website for the time of our services. Note that the Easter 1030 Mass will be outdoors. And uh, please return the gulu and the rice bowl contributions on Easter Sunday and place them in the basket that will be in the gathering space. Remember, too, that confessions will be on Good Friday from 5 until 7 in the evening in church. Our services and our um, other events of Holy Week will be found on our website. You'll also find them on the door of the church. Now let's join together in prayer. Our response is, um, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, in the time of Christ's suffering and death, that we may come together in mourning, in sorrow, in repentance, and then in joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the nations of the world, that by the blood of Christ, though they know him not, their leaders and their people may be led to justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> for all those who are preparing for confirmation and for First Holy Communion during the Easter season, especially at Pentecost, that they may receive the fullness of God's life and love through these Easter sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all of our loved ones who are ill, who suffer, who are separated from their families, uh, for all those who are troubled by uh, mental, emotional disorders, for those who care for them, for all those who are struggling with addiction, that they may have God's help and ours. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all of our beloved dead, that having passed from this world, they may undergo Christ's death and resurrection and share with him in eternal glory, we pray. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, let our prayers arise to you and let your mercy descend upon us and sustain us through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I urge you to take up the Passion in chapters 14 and 15 of Mark and meditated on it during this week. God bless you. There could not be a better week in which to wish you God's blessing.